The nation of Islam. Yeah, I don't. It's okay if I don't get recorded. It's okay if I don't. Well, I put me on the camera then. Okay, stand behind you. No, um, like you said, you said in the nation of Islam that Muhammad owned and sold black slaves. Muhammad did have black slaves. How do you know that though? So I think it's history. I think it's recorded in history. In history. Yeah. So you have to study it. But he did. But Muhammad was a bad man. Are you Muslim? My family's Muslim. Yeah. Okay, but what are you? I would say, yeah, I come from a Muslim family. Yeah. Okay, but you know what? Jesus said that unless a man be born again, then he cannot see the kingdom of God. Do you know what being born again is? Giving your life back to Christ. That's not so basically, when you come to believe in the real Jesus, who is God, who died for our sin, was buried and raised on the third day, he will supernaturally give you a new heart, put the Holy Spirit in you and bring you into a relationship. It's not about religion. You know, people think I'm being horrible to them because I, I, I talk about Muhammad and insult Islam. I'm not insult, I'm, I'm insulting an, an ideology. I'm telling the truth about it. I'm, I'm calling out the bad stuff that's in it so that people will recognize that they're deceived. And that not just that religion, but all religion, because it's not about that it's about relationship when God created the world he made the world to be good but because of the sin of Adam sin came to all men so all men are separated from God just like Adam had to leave Eden we're not getting into heaven with our sin and so to do away with sin God came into his creation in the person of Jesus Christ and he died for our sin he paid for it because he's a just holy God and when he paid for our sin he made the way for us to have salvation so when you believe in Jesus not through the Catholic Church the Pope or any other religion but Jesus Christ himself he will give you a new heart put his spirit in you and bring you into relationship I can say a lot about Mohammed you know he did have black slaves he was he slept with a six-year-old child he married a six-year-old child he slept with a nine-year-old little girl he, he done a lot of bad things that's not a prophet of God God is holy and you don't see any of the other prophets behaving in that way. And just, you know, he was supposed to be, Jesus spoke of one to come after him. Do you know who he talked about? The Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that comes to live in you when you come to believe in Jesus Christ. Not Muhammad. Anybody can come along and say God told them something. Doesn't make it true. The Bible, 700 years before Jesus came into this world, we have a prophet called Isaiah. And in Isaiah chapter 28, it says, if anybody doesn't speak according to this word, the Bible, it's because they have no light in them. It predicted that Jesus would come in the flesh, that he would be born through a virgin, that he would be called mighty God, the son of God, that he would suffer and die for our sin. That was prophesied years before he actually came to fulfill it. So my prayer is that you go away and do your homework and study what I say. So I'm not meaning to attack anyone on a personal level. I just want people to know Jesus. And that's the reason why I called out that stuff. Because they believe themselves to be gods. Did you know that? What, the, the nation of Islam? Yeah, they, they think that they're gods. They say that the first Allah created the world, but they're all gods as well. And they're all called Allah. That's what they think. You need to Google it. Um, mm. Read the encyclopedia. And do you think, um, like for example, like in the nation of Islam, I, I actually, actually, can I ask you something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like for example, like when Muslims say the Bible has been corrupted, because I've got Muslim friends, they say the Bible has been corrupted. Yeah, but you know what it says in the Quran? It says that the Injil and the Torah is God's word, and it says that God's word can't be corrupted. And so, while we have different translations, it's not that, you know, there's some really bad translations out there, but at the same time in the Greek and the Hebrew the different words can mean different things mm. and so they're looking at the Greek and the Hebrew and they're determining which word goes where and what its meaning is and context and everything else so they're looking at that but when we want to you know like I will read the King James or the New King James or the ESV or the NIV or something like that but when I want to revert back to what God was originally saying I will look at the Hebrew and the Greek and we have manuscripts older than Muhammad God, God's word is absolutely perfect it's inerrant so while we do have some really bad translations, and I would agree with that, there is also some really good ones, and we also have the Hebrew and the Greek, which I would revert back to when I'm looking for something. Mm. So I do not, you know, God's word is not corrupted, and according to your Quran, it can't be. So if you believe the Quran, you have to believe the Hindu and the Torah, and both of those contradict the Quran. Mm. And um, I mean, I mean, basically, because um, like for example, like I question as well, because like you know, like. Like, like in Islam, God has like so-called preserved the Quran and made it like uncorrupted. Like you can't, you know, protect on that. But it wouldn't. So make can I ask you a like, question? Can I say something quick here? But it doesn't make sense because like, then why would? How come God, according to like in Islam, how can God have the power to protect the Quran from any ever being corrupted? But it can't do it for the other 
previous book. That's not true. Does, does There's that over. Sense? That's not true. There no, are. I'm just, I'm just asking okay, well, that's not true because um, there are at least, from what I have heard, 37 different Qurans. So they're not the same. So therefore, if you was to look at that, you would say that it's been corrupted. But there's also some really rubbish in there. So for example, like I want to be crude, but you have to look at what Mohammed said regarding men's reproductive organs, because I don't want to talk about that on, the, on my channel. And you're a guy and I don't want to discuss it. But also, he also said that the earth was flat and that the sun comes and sits in a muddy puddle and that Alexandria the Great discovered it. Do you agree with that? Do you think the sun, when it sets, comes, sits on the earth? I don't know. No, it goes round the earth. So, like, for example, when it's daytime here, it's nighttime in Australia. Yeah. And when it's night, so that means the sun is here. And then when the sun's not here, it's in like Australia. So we know that the earth, uh, the sun orbits around the earth. So we know that what Mohammed said about it coming to sit. If the sun was to come and sit on this earth, every human would burn up. Mm. So he was talking rubbish. Mm. So that's in your Quran. So you need to go and study what I say. People make excuses for it though. They go, oh no, no, he meant something else. But no, he really didn't. He meant what he meant. But the current, what do you think? Um, so the sun sits in a muddy puddle? No, no, I mean like, okay, so but. I think it's funny. But, what is it with Islam, yeah? Don't you think that, actually, actually is Muhammad mentioned in the Bible? No. Because they say like, As a false prophet, we're warned. So no, Paul no, warns us that there will be people that come and preach another Jesus and we're told to be weary. But they say, um, so do you know, I don't know if you know the he verse. He falls in that category. No, but do you know the verse in the Bible where it says, um, I have many things, I've, um, I've got many things to say, but you can't bear them now. You can't put Muhammad in that. Anyone yes, could. They, they, no, no, but, no, but that's rubbish. No, no, I'm not trying to say no. No, no, I know, but what you're saying is, people, that's what I'm saying. People say, like, I'm not being funny, but if you, right, when Jesus said, I've got many things to say, you can't bear them now, but the one to come over after you, the spirit of truth, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. So when you come to believe in Jesus, it says that the comforter comes from the Father. So why Muhammad you, didn't come from the Father. So why are Muslims saying it's Muhammad then? Because they're deceived. It's the Holy Spirit. This is what I'm saying. When you come to believe the real Jesus, yes, he will put his Holy Spirit inside of you. When Jesus, when God made, uh, when Jesus, God, made Adam, he breathed life into Adam. This is the first man. But he said to Adam, the day you eat of that tree is the day that you die. And Adam, you know, we know that Adam disobeyed God and we know that sin came to all men and he died. But when you come to believe in Jesus, he breathes the Holy Spirit into you. The comforter is the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God. The Spirit of truth is the Spirit of God. Read Genesis chapter one. In the beginning, um, the Lord, the God made the earth and the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of truth, the comforter, the one to come, the helper. Talked about in John chapter 14. That's not Muhammad. So why, um, but they're deceived. Then why do you think? Why do you think? Why do you think Islam? Okay, for me, yeah, like a lot of people say, a lot of people um, say that, that Islam's becoming more true because, like, for example, Christianity. Like, I, I don't know. I think the ONS, the official of national statistics, said that less than half of British people now identify as Christians, but Islam is now rising. Like, yeah, but you know what, Jesus. Why do, why do you think? Why do you think that is? Okay, so because where we're living in the last days. So basically, Jesus said that the road to hell was broad and wide and the million there and are on it. But the road that leads to life was narrow and few be there that find it. If you read Matthew 24, um, if you read uh, Mark chapter 13, Luke 21, you'll read that in the last days, there's supposed to be a great big falling away. It's apostasy. So in the last days, many false prophets will come and deceive many. So, it, you know, when the devil, when Jesus was in the uh, wilderness, he was in the wilderness the devil offered him all the kingdoms of the world so when the world loves you you're at enmity with God so you know because this world doesn't belong to Jesus that what Jesus said that when I was about to crucify him he said this world is not my home if it was my followers would fight so this world God gave it over to Satan he's the prince of this world and so while God is absolutely sovereign and he's working everything out for his purposes he's you know this is not uh, his kingdom 
God's church is not a religious organization like Catholicism or Islam. It's his people. So when you believe in Jesus and God gives you the Holy Spirit, you become the temple of the living God. We that believe in Jesus, genuine, true, born again believers, we're in the minority. But what you have are lots of false religions like you have Islam, Roman Catholicism, Jehovah Witnesses, Seventh Day Adventists. Satan is in all of that. But those of us that believe in Jesus, we're not, we are the church, we are the temple. We don't belong to religion or an organization. We belong to Jesus Christ himself. And we are his body. We're his hands and feet on this earth. That's what it means. So Islam growing is because the apostasy in the world is growing and it was prophesied in the Bible that it was. And so it's deception. Deception is increasing and that's what we're seeing. Oh, thank, thank you for... Um... Okay, and my prayers, can we can read the study? Because I promise you, Jesus is the truth. When you come to believe Jesus is God, when you believe in your heart that Jesus is God, that he died for your sin, was buried and raised on the third day, and you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, he will save you, and he will give you a new heart and put his spirit in you and reconcile you back to God, for, and you'll have relationship, not religion, all right? Go to Jesus directly. You want to be saved? Go to Jesus. Don't go to any man. Cry out to Jesus from your heart, and he he will save you and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the one to come after Jesus will take care of you. Alright? Okay, alright. God bless. Alright.